All right, guys. So today we are going to be working in a program called SketchUp to create a floor plan. So what I've got here is I have drawn a rough sketch of my room. I first start out by measuring the room. And what I want is I need dimensions between corners. Here you can see I have 12 feet between one corner and the next corner. The next measurement is about 12 foot four. So that's 12 foot four inches. On the next one, I just have three and a half feet. So one of the cool things about SketchUp is that I can interchange my different types of measurement systems. 3.5 feet, which is decimal feet, is equal to three foot six inches. Just know that you can enter it in either way. On this wall over here, when we enter it in the program, it's five feet, but we're going to enter it as 60 inches. And I'll show you how that works. There are also three windows in this room, and then there's a doorway. And we have some assumptions. So for example, the height of the tops of the doors and windows is 80 inches. Uh, this is going to have an eight foot ceiling, and we'll make the assumption that these are all four inch thick walls. If you think about the construction of a wall, you have a two by four, which is actually three and a half inches, plus the sheetrock on either side of it is going to bring it to about four inches. With that, let's go ahead and get started. You can also download and print this handout here so you can follow along. Let's get back to SketchUp. All right, so I am here on SketchUp's website. And the reason that we're looking at the website is because the latest version of SketchUp that is free is actually web-based. And so you can go into the program through a web interface. Now, this is assuming that since you're watching this video that you have an internet connection, if you didn't have an internet connection, you would have to purchase a version of SketchUp. If you do have an internet connection, this is easy. You just go to their website, sketchup.com. SketchUp's been around since about probably 2006 or so, so it's about 14 years old. Pretty powerful program used by architects and designers. Now, once we get to the main page, I'm looking for this product section. When I click on that, I need to look in this column marked for personal. There are different versions of it here. You can look at the plans and pricing if you'd like, but I'm just going to go to SketchUp Free, which is the version we'll be using. You'll end up on the next page, which gives us a button marked Start Modeling. We'll go ahead and do that. Now, I have already logged into SketchUp, so if you get to this point and it's asking you to set up an account, you want to go ahead and do that and then log in. You can pause here if you need to, but then once you're done, you'll come into this interface. This is the main home page, I guess, or main dashboard of SketchUp. Over on the left hand side, you can see there's the home button, which is where we're at. There's a button for the account. Trimble Connect is where you are saving your files up online. You have a choice to either save the files up in Trimble Connect on the internet or in the cloud, or you can also save them locally as well. There's another thing called the 3D Warehouse, which is where there are thousands, probably millions of models that people have created and uploaded for the community. You can also add a location since SketchUp is something that used to be behind Google Earth. You can geolocate your project, which would be important if you were doing something like a pergola, you know, a, a patio covering that needed to cast shadows. With that, that's just kind of a quick tour. Up here at the top, we're going to create a new file, which is found under the home up here. You'll click on it, and then we're going to use the simple template feet and inches. Go ahead and click on that. Even if you're doing this project from uh, outside the US, I'd recommend just following along with this and you'll get a good laugh at how uh, silly our American measurement system is. But what we see here once we've launched it, this is the main interface of SketchUp. What you see on the left hand side, there is a find button, I guess a little search thing. And then there is a left toolbar, but there is also a right toolbar as well. We are going to be operating mainly over here on the left. Down at the bottom, you'll also see an area where there's, I guess, feedback. So if I were to, say, use a pencil tool or maybe the move tool, it will give me other information, like I might use a, an option or an alt key to copy within the move command. And then last but not least, there is a measurements box that's down here on the right. SketchUp is something called a parametric CAD program, where as we draw, we can enter in measurements and it will make it accurate. So if you're 3D printing, this is a good way to get something that is accurate. Let's take a look at the main interface here. This bottom brownish part is actually the ground. The blue is the sky. So what you're seeing is in perspective, and this is your horizon line. The other thing you'll notice is that there's Helen. So there is a woman here that as we zoom in and out, 
per scale changes. And it gives you a rough idea about what scale you're working at in SketchUp. Let me show you how this works. So I have a Logitech mouse with a scroll wheel. And as I zoom out, you can see that Helen gets very small. Well, if I were building a big office building, I might have a small person here. It gives me the scale. If I zoom in, let's say if I were looking at this view, I might be building maybe a piece of furniture. Or if I were making a small product, I would zoom in like this and then start drawing. So Helen's just there to give you an idea of what your overall scale is. As you zoom in and out, you're basically, you know, changing your view, but let's talk about orbiting. There is a tool over here in the left-hand side called the orbit tool. When you click on that, it gets a flyout over here to the right, and you wanna choose this first one, which is the orbit tool. Now, as you click and drag, you can see that I can orbit around Helen and also navigate around the space. However, if I wanted to move Helen side to side without orbiting around her, you just add the shift key. And when you do that, you can pan up and down or side to side. And there's some tricks on here. There's actually several different ways to navigate, but that gives you the basics to get started. So let's talk about this room. I'm gonna leave Helen for now so we know the size of our room. And looking at our document, find it real quick. Oh, mine fell on the floor. Or not. Actually, it's in my laundry basket because, because of COVID, my recording studio is now in my master closet. So anyway, let's take a look here. So we need to draw some lines and I'll switch over so you can see what I'm talking about, but I would recommend printing this. What you'll see is that we need to put some lines in place for 12 foot four and maybe this 12 foot. Those two lines I'm going to orient around the center, which is our origin. And to do that, there's several different ways we can do it. We could create guidelines to draw within, or we could just use the tools. I'm going to switch over here to the pencil tool, which is also the line tool, and click on that and choose the pencil or line tool from the top. Now, let's draw our first line. And what I'm gonna show you is just an exercise in drawing. So let's click anywhere in the model release the mouse, and this is going to be a little bit different than everything else you do in drawing programs. Within SketchUp, you're going to click and release the mouse, move the mouse, and then click again. In this case, what I did is I clicked, I released the mouse, and then I'm moving my mouse around and I get this rubber banding effect. Let's just go over here somewhere and just click. When I click and release, I then get the little rubber banding effect again, and I can go over here and maybe click again and click. And I'm just going to go all over the place and click and click and click. And then when I get back to the end, I'm going to click on the end and see what happens. Two things would have happened. One, if your drawing filled in like this, your points are all on the same plane. And I'll show you what that means. Let's choose the orbit tool again and then click and drag. And when I go to the side like this, you can see that all of those points that I created were on the same level. So they're on the same plane. Imagine that this would be like drawing on your floor. So if I drew on the floor, everything is at the same level. Now in this case, this worked as planned, but you might've actually ended up with no fill in here in the middle. This is called a face. If that happened, be sure and navigate around and what you'll see is that some of the points are down below or maybe up above. So that's an important concept within SketchUp. Another thing is, let's go back to our selection tool, which is this arrow, but let's do that by pressing the space bar. When I press the space bar, I can then click on the different edges here. And these are called edges within SketchUp. If I click on those, they turn blue, which means that they're selected. If I click in the middle, if you have this filled in, that's called a face, and you'll see that it has the little dots. Now, another thing you can do is if you double click, it will select the face and any connected edges that are available, and that looks good. Once you've done this, you can just hit the delete key, and that's how we've created an object within SketchUp that has edges and also a face. If you need to click and get rid of some of those other segments, go ahead and do that now, but we're gonna start drawing some walls. I'll zoom in just a little bit here, and I'm going back to the line tool, but I'm going to show you that shortcuts within SketchUp are very powerful. Let's press the L key. 
When you do that, it switches automatically to the pencil or line tool. So L for line. That saves you the hassle of clicking on this and having to choose things from the flyout. Let's start at the origin. So if you remember back from geometry class that was, you know, years ago, you had to draw things probably on an X and Y axis. So your red line and your green line are the X and Y axes. This other axis, the blue one is a Z axis, which comes up from that other plane. So to start out drawing, let's go ahead and click where those intersect. That's called the origin. So click and release. And then you can see we're doing the rubber band thing. We are going to move our mouse along the green axis. This is going to ensure that what we're drawing is on the same plane. Now we need to enter in a dimension, which is 12 foot four. So I'm going to type 12 and an apostrophe and then four like that and then hit enter. You'll see down at the bottom, that gives me the dimension. It stopped drawing, but what I can do then is I can move along the red axis. And this is something very important in SketchUp. You want to draw on axes if you can. So I'm going to move my mouse over along the red axis and then type 3.5. And then the apostrophe makes 3.5 feet. So it stopped drawing there. Our next segment is going to be the five foot segment that runs along the green axis. And so move your mouse along the green axis and let's type this time instead of five feet, let's try 60 inches. Type 60 and just hit return. Now, an important thing to know is that you don't have to enter the quotation mark for inches. Since we're using a simple template with feet and inches, SketchUp just knows that if you don't enter um, the inch mark, that what you're entering is inches. So it's just kind of a shortcut. Now I'm at the end and I don't know what this other dimension is. I can kind of make a guess. I could do some math, Ugh, yuck, math. But anyway, I'm just going to stop drawing. To do that, I press the space bar. Now we'll come back to this other direction and I'm going to orbit. But if you have a scroll wheel mouse, you can click and drag on the scroll wheel and your cursor will temporarily turn to the orbit tool. If you don't have that, just press O and use orbit that way. To start drawing again, let's press L for the line tool, go back to the origin, click, move down the red axis and type 12 foot and hit return. Now I can go back this uh, green axis and notice that the green axis does not look parallel with this other axis over here. That's okay. That's because of the perspective. So I'm just going to move my mouse along the green axis and type 17 foot four and hit enter. I just need to join these lines over here and I want to make sure that these lines, kind of as if I go along this red axis, that I eventually end up on an end point and that that line stays red. And so that just means that it's parallel with the other wall. We'll go ahead and click. And when we do that, it fills in with a face. So remember from before we had edges and we had faces. And when you connect your edges together, it will automatically fill in with a face. Let's press the space bar just to go back to the selection tool and take a look. Well, what if I want to verify my dimensions here? There's an easy way to do that as well. Over on the left toolbar, you'll see that there's a tape measure. Well, the tape measure can be used for measuring things, but I want dimensions. So I'll click on this tape measure and choose the second icon from the flyout, which is the dimensions tool. I guess in this example, if you just click on one of these lines, you can click release and then move out and click again to get a dimension line. Click, move your mouse out, click again. And just do that all the way around your model. When you get over here to this little bump out for the closet, let's go ahead and make sure you're not clicking on this midpoint, but come over here, click, release, and then move this out and let it snap out here. So whenever you're dimensioning, uh, I guess, a building plan, you want to bring this all the way out here. And then again, if you can't avoid this midpoint, just zoom in. You want to click on that line and come out. Click on this line and come out. It will snap. Notice that if I went this direction, see the blue line? That tells me I'm actually going up in space and I want to go out along the green axis. And there I've dimensioned my entire room. I can verify my measurements. The only one I didn't have was this eight foot six over here. SketchUp has put everything else in there correctly, so we're ready to go. Now I could 
make these dimensions so I could turn them on and off, but we'll just leave them on for this exercise. The next thing we need to do is add walls. So we are going to use something called the offset tool. Over in our toolbar under this middle icon that says push pull, if you click on that, the third icon in the flyout is the offset tool. So we'll click on that. Now I just want to hover over my, my floor. And what you'll see is that there's a red dot that follows the edges. And it doesn't matter where I, I move my mouse, it's going to try and snap to one of these edges. Click on the edge like that, and then move your cursor out, and then type four and hit enter or return. And what we did is we just made an outline directly outside this uh, floor that will give us four inch walls. Now we can actually go back in and remove the center face. So let's press the space bar to get the selection tool, click on the center, and then press the delete key. That gives us a set of walls and we don't have a floor in the middle. Now we need to go in and start working on the doorways. We'll eventually raise this wall up, but for right now we just wanna add the doors. So I'll focus here in this corner and I have a door that comes in about four inches from this wall. There's an easy way to do this though, which is to use a tape measure or it's a, a drawing guideline. Over on the left, you'll click here on the dimension tool and then click on the tape measure. We'll hover over this edge right here on this wall, click release, move over along the green axis, type four and hit return. And that will give us a temporary guideline that we can then use to make our doorway. Well, the width of our door is 36 inches. So let's click, move over and type 36, make sure it's along that green axis. And that gives us the second line that we need to define our door. Well, we could use the line tool here. That's one way, or we could even use a rectangle tool. Let's go over here to the toolbar and choose the first rectangle, which has a shortcut of R by the way. And I want to hover right here where there's this intersection of the wall and the guideline. Click. And you can see I'm drawing a rectangle, but I want to come over here to this opposite corner and click. And now I created the two lines. Because we drew over these existing lines, SketchUp sees them as the same, same line. It doesn't actually give you stacks of lines. There's still just a single line there. And then we need to go in and erase. So let's talk about how we can do that. There is an eraser tool that we can use. And if you click on that, you could click on this guideline to get rid of it. You could also click out here and drag across the lines. You could click and drag across this line and get rid of it. Let's undo though. So Command or Control Z and go back until we have all of these again. Let's try a different technique. To get to something called a crossing box, you need to switch back to the selection tool. In this case, we need to draw a box that will cross these different elements so we can select them and then press delete. But watch what happens. If I click up here in the upper left-hand corner and drag down to the right, nothing is selected. That is a normal selection tool. If we click and drag a box like this, we are only selecting the things that are inside that box that are fully contained within the box. Let's click anywhere to deselect. Now, if we use something called a crossing box, which is the opposite direction, we start at the lower right and go up to the upper left, anything that we cross will be selected. So you can see here it's selected both the edges and the face, and then we can press the delete key. You can also use this with guidelines. I'm not going to do it down here because if I were to click and drag with a crossing box, I've also selected this dimension line. We deselect by clicking, click and drag up to the upper left and hit delete. And this one's a little bit trickier, but let's go ahead and get in here real quick, cross and then press delete. So there we've deleted our lines. Now we can switch to the O orbit tool and then add that shift key to move it down into position. Also, I'll show you if you were to hold the shift key and get way out here and, oh, I can't find my design. If you use shift Z, that's called zoom extents. So shift Z will bring this back into view and then you can scroll out. All right, so we're going to have another thing happen over here. We've got a doorway for a closet and then a couple windows. 
But I did this one to show you a different way. So if you are planning it, you can add your doorways. But I'll show you in a minute how to do this when we have the wall already in place. So let's scroll in and I'll press the space bar just to make sure I'm, I'm back at the selection tool. And this time we're going to use the push pull tool. Well, because my menu changed when I chose the offset tool, if I click here on the offset tool, I can select the push pull tool up here or I can use the shortcut, which is the letter P. Now I'm going to hover and you can see as I hover that this actually gets a little pattern on it. Let me click and release, move my cursor up, and this is going to be eight foot walls. So let's type eight foot and hit return. That gives us the walls and I could scroll out or I could use shift Z again. But you can see now as I hover over these different walls, I could push pull any one of these. In fact, let's click one here. Let's click, move out and click again. And you can see that we can use the push pull tool to, to do all sorts of cool stuff. Let's just undo. We're going to need to put a doorway here. And then we also need to bring a section here of the wall that is above the door. So let's focus on that first. Now, remember that we assumed that our doorways were 80 inches tall. I need to get a guideline where I can come in here and make that happen. So let's press the T key to get to the tape measure. Click on this bottom edge and release. Move your cursor up, type 80 and hit return. That gives me a guideline. I pressed O, but you can see I now have a guideline that's up on that wall. I want to zoom in here. So let me show you two. Contextual zoom means if I hover here and I zoom, it's going to bring this into center focus. Let's zoom out for a second. I'll show you something else. If I hover on this lower corner and zoom in, you can see it brings that corner into focus. So it depends on where you're hovering when you zoom as to what, uh, I guess, what comes into view. So let's zoom in on this corner. And now let's use the rectangle tool to define a section here that we can pull across. Press R for the rectangle tool. Click. You'll come up here to the top corner and click again. And you can see it gave us a line here. To switch to the push pull tool, let's use a key command now, which is P. And as you hover, you can see that it's divided this wall into two sections. We're going to zoom out a little so we can see both this edge and this. Click, pull back out, and then hover over this endpoint and click again. With your push pull tool still selected, you can see that this wall is divided into two pieces. We need to get rid of this line here to make it one. Let's press the E key for the eraser. Click on that line, click on this line, and then we need to go to the back side. So let's navigate using our orbit tool. And if I lose that corner, I can do a shift Z and then just zoom in again. So shift Z is going to be really handy for you. Press E for the eraser and click again. Shift Z. O. And now you can see that I have a wall. Let's go in and deal with this doorway over here. So we know that we have a doorway that is four feet wide. I don't think I wrote that down, but it's going to be four feet wide on a five foot wall. We'll scroll in here and basically we need to draw a rectangle on this wall, but we need that rectangle to be centered. Let's use the tape measure again. Press the T key. Hover on this line, click, come over along the green axis, but this time Move your mouse down or move your cursor down until you find a blue dot. That blue dot is the midpoint of the wall. And so we're going to find the midpoint and then draw two guidelines out from each side that are 24 inches. So hover on this guideline again, click, come over to the right and type 24 and hit return. Hover on the middle one, come back out. And this time let's type two feet, two apostrophe feet. So 24 inches or two feet is the same exact measurement. Now, if I were to draw a rectangle here, let's go ahead and just draw one. We're going to eyeball it and not pay attention to the 80 inch height. Press R. Hover somewhere on this left guideline. Click. Move to the bottom and click again. And now we've defined some sort of a rectangle on the wall. Now we'll use push pull to push this through. So use P. You can see if we hover, we can click, 
And this one, you want to go back until it says offset limited or on face. When you click on that, now you can see we have a doorway. If we shift Z again, then we can zoom out, press O, and just get a feel for what this looks like. But you can see that my doorway is much lower than this other one, and we'll fix that here in a moment. I'm adding the shift key to move up, and I want to delete these guidelines. I don't need them anymore. So we'll press the space bar, click on the lower right, go up to the upper left, select those three lines, and press delete. You can also use your um, eraser tool as well. So I'll zoom back out. So how are we going to make this height the same as this one? Let's go to the underside. I'll press O and get a view where I can actually see both doors. I might need to zoom in on this one real quick. So let's zoom in, press the P. I'm going to click on this and then zoom out with my scroll wheel and come over here until I can touch this top of this door frame and see what happens. You'll see that there's a little line, a dashed line between the two doors. And what it did is it brought this level up to be the same as the other one. So this is using something called an inference. Press the O key and you can see that I now have two doorways and they're both the same height. Interestingly, when we start adding the windows, you may not have ever noticed this, but the height of your doors and the height of your windows are generally, if built by a reputable contractor, should be at exactly the same height. So let's go over here and address this window. And the window on this side is 36 inches wide by 48 inches tall. And it's going to be centered on this wall. Let's press the T key. We'll click. Come over until we can find that center point. Then our window is going to be 36 inches, so we just divide that. Click. Move over, type 18. Click. Move over, type 18. And there we have our guidelines. Now we're going to draw using a rectangle. So press R. And this time we want to hover over this little end point up here at the top of the door and then come over to these lines and you'll see not the red line. There might be another line, but when you get this dotted line, that is actually borrowing the top of the door's measurement and we're going to apply it towards the window. So we'll click and then move this down here. And I can show you, if you look at the dimensions at the bottom, you'll see that it says three foot three. And then as I move this down, it shows me that it's maybe four foot eight. We can change this dimension. We see that the three foot dimension after the comma, that is the width of our window. We only need to change the height, which is the number to the left of the comma. So I'm just going to type 48 and hit return. Now, if I want to measure this and make sure that that's correct, I could use my tape measure or I could use the dimension line, but let's just use the tape measure pressing T. If I were to click on this upper corner and then move down, it will show me that it's four feet. And then I can just press the space bar to get rid of it. So I'm not making a guideline. I'm just using it as a measuring tool. Now I can use push pull. So press P, click, and then go back. But this time I'm just gonna push through and show you something that can happen. Press the O key and look what happened. It came through the back. So if your window doesn't work right, you can just undo, press P. And mine is not letting me select the right thing. So let me press the space bar. Click on the background to deselect and then press P. Click and then watch for it to show something like that where it says on face or you get this kind of reflective look to it almost and click again. And now you can see that I have actually punched through on the window. Last but not least, let's clear up these uh, guidelines. Press the space bar, lower right, upper left, press the delete key. And there you go. So there we have one window. And all that we have left to do is add two windows to this wall over here. So we've got two windows that are 30 inches wide, separated by a piece of wall that's 18 inches. Let's zoom in and use our tape measure to find the center. So we'll press T, come down here, click, move your mouse and look for that center point. There we go. Since this is an 18 inch section, we need nine inches on either side. So we'll click and type nine, click, 
go over, type 9 again, then guidelines for our windows. So click, type 30, click, type 30, and there we go. So we've laid out where our windows are going to be. We could also come up from the bottom, click and come up and type 80, and then come down. So we'll use this guideline and then come down 36. So that's another way that you can do it. We'll just go with that for right now. Then we just draw a rectangle. So press R, click and click, click and click. Press P for push pull and go back. And this time, wait for it to say on face. But in the next one, let's just double click. So what happens is once you've used the push pull tool once and gone back four inches on that one, you can just apply it to anything else. So you could have laid out all of the lines for your windows and doors and then gone back and just double click, double click, double click. Let's clean up the guidelines. Press the space bar. Click and drag from the lower right to the upper left. Delete. Let's clean up these over here and clean up our original guideline. So there you can see it's pretty easy to remove those. There is our basic room, but I do see one other flaw, which is the fact that there is not a wall in our closet. And since we're going to be putting some storage things in our closet, we'll go ahead and build that as well. What I'm going to do here, though, is there's a couple different ways I could accomplish this wall, but let's grab an, a rectangle, press R. I could just draw a big rectangle and then use inferences. So let's try that. It doesn't matter where I click, but I'm just going to make a rectangle that goes from the top to the bottom. I can then use push pull to click, move this out, and then hover on this wall right here. This is again using an inference and click again. So we have a super thick wall like that. Then we can use push pull, press P, click, release, and then go hover over this wall. And there you go. That gives us a wall that is the right thickness. And then all that's left is we just need to come over here, make another rectangle, push pull, make it intersect this wall over here, rotate. And these look pretty close, but let's make them exact. Use P, so you can click, and then hover over this other wall, and it's now exactly the same thickness. All you need to do now is to orbit around, and we had an extra line here. So let's press E for our eraser and then click to get rid of it. And now you can see that we have our room. One last thing that we can do, if you wanted to go ahead and paint this, you can also do that as well. Now, there is a paint bucket over here. So if you click the paint bucket and choose it, something comes out from this right hand toolbar. And it's really strange because you're like, oh, here's my home. This is what's in the model already. If you click over here on the search one, you can choose different colors or fabrics or, or carpets. Click on the colors and then you can choose a nice color for your wall. Um, for my lovely studio, I have a chartreuse green. Then you just use the paint bucket and you can click on the different wall segments. If you need to navigate, press O. Press B for the paint bucket to get back to it. Press O and press B to paint. Something like that. And I got all the walls. That looks pretty good. If you wanted to put a bright orange accent wall in there, you could too. So you can play around with your colors. And then to get rid of this, let's just use this arrow over here to make that go away. And now you can see that our room is done. One last step is to group this and then lock it in place. Let's press the space bar and then remember what we did with selection. So if I click once, I get the face. If I click twice, I get the face plus the edges. If I want to get everything that's connected, you triple click one, two, three. Once you do that, you can see I've selected everything. Right click and then choose make group. Now, in order to lock this in place, because the very next step is going to be adding our furniture, Right click and then choose lock. Now we have a room that we can go in and start to decorate with. That is a good basic starting place within SketchUp. This can get much more complex or you can go in and add furniture from the 3D warehouse. But this is probably the most basic steps of 
creating your room in SketchUp. Something else we need to talk about that I actually forgot is how to save our work. The newer version of SketchUp is so good at saving your work that I frequently forget. So I'll have to, to show you how to do that. First of all, we need to give our file a name. So I'm going to click this untitled up here and it will ask me where I want to save it. This is essentially our drive, our cloud drive, which says SketchUp. And then I have folders in here. If you haven't created a folder yet, you can just say add folder and let's just give it say class sample and click create. Once I've done that, if I double click it, I'm inside that folder. And now I could give it a name. I could say this is Cat's new studio and then save here. Once I've done that, you can see that the name has been changed up here. It tells me I'm saving and then it gives me the status of saved. That's how I'm going to actually save my work. Now this thing up here in the upper left hand corner is called a hamburger. So if you click on that and go home, it will show you all of your different uh, models that you have. In fact, notice that it has two different Cat's New Studios. So it's allowing me to have something um, of the same name, which is not good. But if you look over here on the side, Trimble Connect, this is where I can go look at my different projects. So it has a little breadcrumb thing up here. If I click SketchUp and then I choose, let's see, Class Sample, you can see that it's giving me a, a list here of my path, I guess, to get to my project. And here's Cat's New Studio. By double clicking on it, it will load it and I can get back in and start working on it again. But that's the basics of saving and how you kind of organize your files. A little bit more to it, but this will get you started for now. I guess uh, enjoy SketchUp and, and have fun designing your own room.